Welcome back everybody and today we're going to continue working with the Raspberry Pi 4 computer. We're using the Raspbian operating system downloaded from raspberrypi.org. First thing we have to do is make sure that we can connect to our desktop computer using an SSH client like FileZilla or Bitfice. We do that by writing sudo touch forward slash boot forward slash ssh to allow connection. And I'll reboot the computer to make sure that it works. We have a physical LCD display connected to the Raspberry Pi, but we want to be able to connect to it with a remote desktop. First, we're going to download an open source remote desktop protocol server for the Raspberry Pi. You do this by typing sudo apt-get install xrdp. And after the installation is finished, we have to figure out our IP address, the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. To figure out your IP address, you just have to write ifconfig, and this will show you the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. You will be searching for a IP address starting with 192.168, and in my case, it is .2.7. And now that we have our IP address, we can head back to our Windows PC, where we can download the Bitvice SSH client for free. And after the installation, you just have to input the just founded IP address and make sure to put port 22. The username is pi and your password, well, you probably already know your password. And you should see a screen something like this. And now you are able to transfer files between your PC and the Raspberry Pi. Now let's head back to Windows and search for mstsc.exe. This would open the remote desktop connection. Here you input the IP address of the Raspberry Pi computer, in my case 192.168.2.7, allow the connection, and you will see this screen. This means that it did work. Input your username and input the password. Simple. And press OK. If you don't know the password, the default password is Raspberry. OK, now we're almost there, because we want to use our GPIO, that's those uh, million pins in the side of the Raspberry Pi, we want to use those. First, we're going to start by checking out our GPIO version. You do so by typing GPIO-V, and you should get a screen similar to mine. So what we want to do now is read all the pins of our GPIO and we get an error message. And as you can see, it says, oops, we're unable to determine the board type, model 17. So it seems like our GPIO is outdated. So what we have to do is update, I think our entire Linux. So type sudo apt update, and this will tell us if there are any updates available. Okay, apparently 15 packages can be updated. So let us check out the upgradable list. Okay, as big as this list seems, it doesn't seem to have anything from GPIO. Let us fully upgrade the Raspberry Pi anyway. Okay, give it some time to update. And after we have upgraded it, we can check if our GPIO is working, but I think it's not working. Now we still have the same error, so it's not working. Let's clear our screen. And after we have cleared our screen, let's just recheck our version and read all screen. Okay, our error is back. In order for us to use the GPIO, we first have to download Wiring Pi. Change your directory to the temporary folder and get the wiring pi installer package by typing https double dot slash slash project downloads dragon net wiring pi latest dot dep. Okay, I promise you we're almost done. Now write sudo d package dpkg dash i and then type wiring pi and press tab to autofill it. And now we're installing the wiring pi latest version. As you can see, it is upgraded. And now we're gonna check out if a GPIO can read the pins. And hell yeah, it can read the pins. Let us clear our screen and take a closer look at the GPIO pin distribution. This screen represents all the 40 different physical pins found in the GPIO. 20 on the left side and 20 on the right side. All the physical pins also have a name, which can also be found at the extension board. Whenever trying to communicate to the pins in Python, you have to check out the list of BCM. And when we're using the C language, you have to communicate through the name found in the list WPI, the wiring Pi list. So for instance, when we're trying to connect to the name GPIO0 is physical port number 11. When we're trying to communicate to that through C, we would call that pin zero. And if we would use Python, we would call it pin 17. Okay, okay, I know, I know. It's getting very confusing. But let us start opening the Superstar Skip, man. I think it's time for some unboxing. <laughs> Trying to record here. I'm glad y'all are excited. Hi, everybody, we're back. And we bought the Superstar Skip for the Raspberry Pi. That's supposed to be the Raspberry Pi. I got this model, the Raspberry Pi 4 computer, the Model B for a gigabyte RAM. Well, this is just the box. I bought this super starter kit, I thought let's check it out together, let's open it up. By the way, 
this is the Raspberry Pi. In the previous video, you saw how I built this. What would be inside this box? Nobody knows. At first sight, what do we see here? We have a huge list of components. A DVD with yeah, lessons and code and software. So we're gonna try it out later. It's this, a resistant list. Uh, it explains how resistors work. How to read the codes of the resistors. Uh, what else do we see? A numpad. Uh, this is the breadboard. What are these? Uh, I think these are LEDs. Ah, oh, I see a small button here. Huh, nice. What the hell is this? The uh, ultrasonic sensor. A dot matrix. <coughs> a dot matrix, nice. A small DC motor. And what do we have in here? Potentiometer and I think a couple of chips. I don't know what these chips do in a while. And a lot of resistors here. How many are these? That's a whole lot of resistors. And different resistors. I see different color combinations on them. So they're diff those are different resi resistors. Ah, and some connectors for the bed. And here we have the bottom part. Damn, so many things. Micro servo. How are we ever going to find out what everything is? I have no clue. LCD screen or something. Ah, here, here it is. This is the part that connects to the Raspberry Pi. Well, no, to, to the breadboard. And then you connect it uh, using this big cable to the Raspberry Pi. Ah, that makes sense. This. Oh, sure. The fan. Uh, this part. I don't know what it is. There are so many things and there's no guide. No book or something. So I, I guess all the information will be on the DVD. This looks like an infrared sensor. Just guessing. Oh. <laughs> written down there it's an infrared module so I was right remote control so many, so many small things what would this be some connectors oh nice so I think we've had everything now a battery oh we could put it on this part very interesting so I think we can make a a battery based uh, Raspberry Pi, but I don't know. So that was everything that's inside the box. Okay, so um, <coughs> opened up. I don't even know what to call it. It's the GPIO extension board. I think we have to connect them together. I guess we. You should put it in like this. I don't know if it's smart. I think I should put it a, a little bit on top of the breadboard. Just for safety issue if we put something in uh, this socket. Because we might bend it if we uh, would uh, apply it like this. You see it gets a little bit of momentum. I think we should put it something like that. And from the top we can see that we have three holes on the right and two holes on the left. So I don't know which way I should choose but I think I'm just gonna force it in now. Let me check. Yep, all the pins are right. Oh, this is scary, man. I need to apply a lot of force. Okay, here we go. Ah, we have a board. Now we can grab this cable. Now uh, this thing should be connected to our Raspberry Pi. Uh, okay, this is, a, this is a little bit disappointing. It won't fit in here, and even though if it would fit in here, my fan that I have in there cannot be connected anymore. That will mean that my fan should be connected with one of the pins over there. 
and instead of the way it is connected right now. Well, that's a little bit disappointing. So as it seems, I cannot use my casing well. I want to use this breadboard because for some reason I'm not able to close the case again. That is a little bit disappointing. A little bit, very much. This is a little bit later in the future. So this is the Raspberry Pi so far and I think I'm going to open it now to show you guys how I finished it. Because like I said in the video, I couldn't finish this myself. And now I'm going to open it because I'm going to show you how to fix this. Well, you already see the answer here. I am missing one screw over there. So I had to destroy it a little bit. Move these two pins. So here in this shot we can see there are three places where we can connect screws. And here should be the fourth one. So I had to, I had to file a little bit here. So I was able to close this again. So yeah, I hope you did enjoy this video and yeah, maybe we will work on some tutorials in the next video. So thanks a lot for being around. See you guys later. Bye.